Hello and welcome! In this example, we want to find the zeros of a function using our TI-83 or 84 calculator. Now the example I've cooked up for this problem is f of x equals x cubed plus x squared minus a6x. Now remember those zeros are places where this function will cross the x-axis. Alright, so let's go ahead and grab our calculators and see how we can first get this into the calculator and then have it find the zeros for us. Alright. So what I first need to do to get this function into the calculator is to go to my y equals screen. You'll find this button in the lower left of the screen, so you press that. And now we're going to enter in x cubed plus x squared minus a 6x. So x caret 3 plus x caret 2 minus 6x. There we go, so there's our function. And now if you press the graph, we can take a look at its shape. Now yours may look like this or you might actually be crunched up on the axis. Sometimes you do have to adjust your window and that's this button right here. And mine is set for between negative 5 and 5 on the x's and between negative 10 and 10 for the y's. Okay, so make sure your window is set up the same way so it looks like mine. All right, let's press our graph button and take one more look at this thing. So if you look at the graph, you can see that it actually crosses the x-axis and look like three spots. So we want to have the calculator find each of these zeros. To do that, I want to go into the calc menu, and you can find it right above the trace button. So press your second, and then trace, and this will bring up all of our calc menu options, and number two says zero. So I'll highlight that one and press enter. Now, I have to basically box in these zeros to help the calculator start to find them. So right now it's asking for a left bound. If I use my arrow keys, I have this little blinking cursor on the screen that starts to move. So I want to move this little blinking cursor so it is somewhere on the left side of the zero I'm looking for. There we go. So this is the zero I'm trying to hunt down, and I've moved this cursor somewhere on the left side. All right, I'm going to press Enter and now it wants to know the right bound. So now we're going to move that cursor to some place on the right side of that zero. All right, as soon as you get it there, press enter one more time. And now it finally wants to know a guess. So where do you think that zero is? You can move your cursor as close as you can to that zero. It actually doesn't have to be right on, but you know, just kind of somewhere close. And press enter one more time. Now the calculator will think for a bit, and then actually display the location of that zero. It gives us an x-y coordinate. So here, it is telling me that x is equal to, looks like a negative 3. So this is a good idea to write down somewhere. Alright, so that's one zero, and we can go through the same process to find the other ones. Let's quickly go through those. So second, calc, select my zero option, enter move my cursor to where it is on the left side of the zero I'm looking for. Okay, that looks pretty close. Enter. Move my cursor to the right side of the zero I'm looking for. Enter. And move my cursor to where I think that zero is. Enter one more time. And the calculator will display where it thinks the zero is. Uh, so it looks like this one's located right at zero. All right, one more time. So second, calc, zero, enter. Now I'm going to move it to the left side of this zero, enter. Then to the right side of that zero, enter. And finally put my cursor right where I think that zero is, press enter one last time, and it displays where it is. So it says x equals two. So you can see that this is a pretty good way that I can start hunting down the zeros of my polynomial. Now you want to remember that these zeros, you can't have any more than the highest degree of your polynomial. And since my polynomial is a third degree, I know that I'm actually done. Alright? Well, if you'd like to see some more videos, please visit MySecretMathTutor.com.